Foot Clan, we got a great show today. Studs and duds from week six. Jason is here and present, and you'll understand why that was so surprising to us. And uh, a whole lot to talk about today. Big injuries. Don't miss the show. Make sure you subscribe, like the video, leave a comment, and enjoy. Fall is a time for excitement, so go ahead and switch things up with a new recipe from Hello Fresh. With pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions, it's never been easier to try something new. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, with code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. If you're finding yourself ordering with DoorDash more than twice per month, mm -hmm. let's, let's be honest. <laughs> Guilty. Uh, in that case, let's talk about getting you signed up for Dash Pass, the easiest way to save money on what you're already eating. Does it feel like you're paying more for those delivery fees than for your meals with Dash Pass from DoorDash? You'll never have to worry about that again. Look, you've got music subscriptions. you got at-home fitness subscriptions. Um, food delivery subscriptions? Yeah, that's Sign a Sign me that's, up. That's a thing. Time to try Dash Pass by DoorDash and unlock those savings you didn't know you were missing. If you're ready to save money on your DoorDash orders, use the promo code FOOTBALLERS for 50% off your first order of $12 or more after you sign up for Dash Pass. That's 50% off your first Dash Pass order up to $20 value with promo code FOOTBALLERS. Say goodbye to delivery fees. Get Dash Pass for, from DoorDash today. Use the promo code FOOTBALLERS. When you've got zero delivery fees, you're free to get more because you can. Start your free month trial today. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers back for Monday, October 18th. Welcome into the show. Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, is here. Jason Moore somehow made it in. And uh, I'm Andy Holloway. Now, we can't, tell, I mean, we can't tell the whole story. It's too long. Because let's just say Jason had an eventful weekend. Let's just say that I was on the side of a freeway at night, dark, with with uh, kids and dogs in your car, you know, with the, the quintessential broke down on the side of the road situation. No cell service. No cell service. Oh, yeah. But not once, <laughs> two, but twice. Two times. <laughs> two times. Same weekend. I also, imagine that full story will go on the spitballers. Yeah, I'll bet it was. Right. It's a good, it's a good <laughs> oh, story. Oh, man. Uh, but you made it in. I did. I'm Somehow, some way. Mike and I still have just one third of the company. Yeah. I don't know how that we happened. Were, we were losers. <laughs> almost there. <laughs> Busy week of football. We still have a Monday night football game with a lot of fantasy football implications tonight. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers, the community of what, 25,000 strong over at jointhefoot.com. You get a bonus episode, premium perks. Bonus. And um, you're an official supporter of the show. So that's you're just pretty, a better person. Uh, yeah, individually, collectively, better mm -hmm. humans. Yeah, there's 25,000 of tier one humans out there. <laughs> <laughs> but there could be more. So there could, there could be more. <laughs> we haven't capped it. Uh, it's Monday, which means we get sophisticated with <laughs> our <laughs> reactions from the weekend. Some Monday pun day for you. I like this one. I'll, I'll start it. CD Lamborghini. Ooh. Mm, TD Lamb. Simple. Delicious. What about feeling hot, hot, hot? <laughs> I like that you did it in the voice. <laughs> Terry McSnorin. Mm. Oh, Antonio oh. Gibson. Oh. oh, no. Chase Clay Poo. Clay Puddle, maybe? Mm. Chase Deadpool. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Austin Eakler or JTT Jonathan Taylor touchdowns. Oh, he was he good. He was very good. Marquise Hollywood Frown. <laughs> mm. Jalen Waddle. <laughs> Jalen Waddle. I like that one, Jalen Waddle. <laughs> <sighs> it was a it was a weird start to very. the Sunday, and um, spoiler alert: I did not win 
mm-hmm. our DraftKings showdown. In fact, I lost. Mm-hmm. Which, mm-hmm. through six weeks... My condolences. It's your second loss. so you, It's completely even. We've all lost yes. three times. Oh, that's or, I mean, right. two, two. Times, yep. two times. That's right. It's almost like we all do this professionally. But there were so many... Irrelevant players scoring oh, touchdowns. Oh, the, the entire morning. A whole Chris morning. Chris Evans and <laughs> the, the, uh, Chris the, Herndon. The first Ugh. like hour and a half of football was like, just give <laughs> relevant players a touchdown, please. <laughs> but we got through it, and uh, week six nearly in the books. Uh, how many losses do the Cardinals have? Oh, man. Let me count them. Done. <laughs> Six and oh, baby. All right, I got to cut that off right there. We can't get ahead of ourselves. No, we, we've got a tough matchup coming up against the Houston Texans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, revenge game. Um, I did send out a little thank you tweet. When to I saw, Houston? Yeah, when I saw Hopkins and Watt <laughs> running into the tunnel together celebrating, I just know what freedom felt like. Yeah. All right, uh, that's enough of that. Although, if they did go undefeated, that's 20 and 0, right? The first... Uh, the, because the Patriots would have been 19 and 0. Yeah. So would that be 20 and 0? Um, Three playoff games? I guess so. Yeah. Okay. I'm not planning ahead or anything. Sure. But but that'd be cool. News time. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. I think the Steelers were 11 and 0 at one point last yeah. year. Yeah, they were. I'm Ooh. also old enough to remember when the <laughs> Phoenix Suns were 2 and 0 in the NBA Finals. Yeah, but being humble is so much less entertaining. Oh, that so is true. boring. Yeah, boring. <laughs> All right, Jason. Any thoughts on Christian McCaffrey being placed on injured reserve Saturday morning? Um, uh, no, I don't have any thoughts because I'm dead inside, uh, and the internal monologue has been cut off, completely strangled. So, um, <laughs> yeah, he's on the IR. So there was apparently a setback. You filthy liar, um, liar, liar, head coach. Uh, who I'm not even going to name you. You don't deserve Ooh, it. Yeah, I you was, have turned. I was talking about the, these whatever whatever this mystery team is being one of my new favorites, <laughs> and here they're. Their head coach lying to us that there's been no setback. And, uh, yeah, so you're going to miss t- at least two more six, weeks. Six games since 2019 for Christian McCaffrey. What if there was a setback, but he just didn't know about it at that time? <laughs> then I will forgive him. Okay. Uh, what about the fact they lost three straight? Are they still beloved? Wait, how many games have they had no Christian McCaffrey? Three games. Oh, those three, yeah. Um, have you seen the numbers for Sam Darnold between those three games in these last three? Yesterday was a barf fest. That being said, he had eight drops. Oh, so yeah. Droppy, uh, Droppy Robinson didn't make it into the names? Oh. Well, his name is Anderson, so oh, yes, Droppy yeah, Robinson would yeah, be a weird name for him. <laughs> <laughs> would it be the first time on this yeah. show? Um, no, no. We've set the precedent. We can say your name any way we choose. Uh, Christian McCaffrey on IR, it sucks. Um, Mm -hmm. I think some people had maybe shipped off Chuba and thought they were uh, McCaffrey Uh, was going to be back. I mean, he almost played last week. Yep, you did. Uh, Thankfully, and where I had um, when it looked like McCaffrey was coming back, I traded for Chuba, and um, obviously too late to do that. But let it be known if you if your stud running back is injured or pops up with any kind of injury designation, go get the backups. Chris Carson. Yeah, it's time to ensure. And Russell Wilson were both placed on injured reserve this weekend as well. So you saw the Alex Collins show and Travis Homer and DJ Dallas. I mean, it was a a group effort to run the ball as much as possible, which you need to do with Geno Smith and thoughts from last night. I mean, they were they were it, much more competitive than I thought they were going to be. I mean, I I think that. But Metcalf and Lockett are kind of what I was bringing up. Where there, I sure. mean, there's reason to be. Lockett deserves a full bench at yeah. this point in time. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I would not want to play him. It's unfortunate. All right. Well, Kareem Hunt suffered mm. a calf injury. It looked very serious. Um, carted off. Carted off. MRI today. In tears. Yeah, this was this was a nasty injury, and it was it was kind of awful because Mike and I were watching this game together, and. Oh, I mean, I, I'm not going to blame sorry. you, but it's your fault. I'm sorry, America. Mike literally just said, he goes, hey, Andy, has Kareem Hunt ever missed a game due to injury? No, you did 
didn't. I did. Right before the injury, I like, was talking like about five his durability. minutes before. He's talking then, about how he never yeah. gets hurt. And then right when the injury happened, what did you two gentlemen say in unison? We that Jason traded for Kareem Hunt. Yeah. So whose fault is it really? Yeah. So I, it's just the shows. <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, we don't know the severity, but Matthew Betts expects an IR stint. I'm still worried about the Achilles with the fact that he was in such. He was just not able to do anything. We'll see what happens because uh, Nick Chubb's already out. So Dearness Johnson is going to be one of the biggest pickups of the week. I, I do yeah. think that the, the injury news on Kareem Hunt is going to be extremely important because if it's Achilles, that's at, at his age, 20, 26, one year left on his yeah. contract, it's probably, for all intents and purposes, a, a career ender. Like if you're in it could be. I traded for him, of course, in a dynasty league. Um, so the, I'm waiting with bated breath to just see, like, Come on, calf strain, IR stint, and come back in a couple weeks and be good the rest of the year and next year. Uh, we're just we got to make sure it's not that Achilles. Baker Mayfield hurt his shoulder again. It looked very painful. Then he went into a blue tent, got a magic shot, and went back out on the field. But he says he's going to play. He's very uncomfortable. It's going to be painful the rest of the year for him. Beckham, shoulder injury, left for a while, came back. Dak, calf strain. He said he could have played on it. Um, he also has the bye week, so I'm not worried. Kadarius Tony, this was unfortunate. Yeah, he ruled he, out, aggravated the ankle. He was cooking, and the play that you should go watch it just because it's like an incredible football move. Where you know how a receiver frequently they will catch and then just spin to the other direction uh, with the defender uh, barreling <laughs> down on him. Well, he did a double move. He spun and then just immediately changes direction the other way. The defender is left. In a, in a puddle of their own shame on the ground. And then, unfortunately, during the tackle of that play, he got hurt. But he he was cooking early, and then this injury led to just a full meltdown from Daniel Jones. Antonio Gibson. Ugh. He left the game due to shin re-injury or pain or whatever he's dealing with with the stress fracture. And then he left later due to a calf injury. So I don't know if they're – Separate. They made it sound like they were different injuries. Everything I've read said that they were different injuries, but you know maybe they're not. Maybe Man, they're the same problem. Why? Like a couple weeks ago, we had a, a week where everyone was injuring their ribs, and now mm -hmm. this is no, like calf, Gibson calf, Chubb calf, Hunt calf. The only one not hurting their calf is McCalfrey. Mm. Oh. oh, that was bad enough that I liked it. <laughs> like it was it's cathartic. Bad. Yeah. Let's get the pain uh, out. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. Alex Collins, um, hip and glute injuries. Another glute index. Uh, so that's maybe why you saw DJ Dallas in overtime. Latavius Murray exited late with an ankle injury. Uh, there's some concern for a mild high ankle sprain. Okay. Well, Lev Bell, Devonta Freeman are going to get more work than Tyson, who was an active. Yeah, again. Uh, it'll be Freeman. T.Y. Hilton went T.Y. Houston again, but then was ruled out and went T.Y. Hilton again with the quad injury. Yeah. I mean, it, but it, it was happening. I know. It was happening again. This is impossible. Actually He's wins. been done for three years, <laughs> except when he plays Houston. Yeah, it's crazy. Unbelievable. Uh, did you guys know with this injury, I am now down 17 people in my dynasty league next week? I did Holy know, and I, and I would bet $100. Oh That's I will make 17. A, I will make a $100 bet that you win next week. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be. <laughs> You've got I, the gonna, easiest I, matchup of all time. I, mean, I think the stalwart on my roster right now for next week is uh, Ferkser. Ooh, Ooh, Ferk Daddy? Ferk Daddy. If sat, between buys and IR. I literally told Mike halfway through the game, I go, oh. <gasps> I got T.Y. Hilton for next week. Nope. Paris Campbell ruled out with a foot injury. This is Yeah, this guy, man. Unfortunate. He and he had a fifty yard touchdown bomb. Yeah. That was fantastic, which is like the 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 complaint about Paris Campbell was he, he's just gonna be a slot guy, does everything next to the line of scrimmage. Huge play. Yeah, so this is very disappointing. Yes, it's unfortunate. And then Terrace Marshall Jr. ruled out. Tyreek Hill exited, came back. And then we got news yesterday that A.J. Brown was added to the injury report with an illness questionable against the Bills tonight. So this is a nightmare. I mean, by the time you're listening to this, if you have waivers that run once a day, any advice we give you now is useless. Um, if you can go pick somebody else up, you can pick up a Josh Reynolds. Um, you can pick up a Cam Batson. You can, 
you can take a shot at one of these players and pray as a pivot, but um, more news later today. I'm sure you'll have an idea of whether he's going to play. That was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper. We have studs and duds on the show today, but if you want breaking news, you got to get the Sleeper app, download it, subscribe to the Breaking Alerts channel, and um, then you'll know about A.J. Brown before everybody else. You guys ready to move on? Let's go. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Mike, I want a new segment. I want a new segment for the (laughs) court. It's called Who Didn't Mike Start in Dynasty? Yeah. Um, This would be incredibly valuable information for people. Yeah. Please let us know who you sit and who you start because, Kirk Cousins, you sat? That is correct. Well, to be fair, I played him the past two weeks. Okay. When he was against Cleveland, scored 12 points and then 15. And I said, okay. It's I, Daniel Jones. Time. I can't keep doing this. Kadarius Tony's breaking out. Daniel Jones against the Rams. It's not a great matchup. but So I, I played Daniel Jones. And then, then Kirk Cousins goes off for another 30 burger. Yeah, he's the quarterback 10 on the season. Went went 373 and 3. Unbelievable. And uh, you saw Thielen break back out. Jefferson's great. So those two players, with Dalvin Cook back in tow, you know, that's key to the offense. Apparently. Uh, Dak Prescott, huge game, 445 and 3. Kyler back to Kyler things. Didn't matter if he's on the road. I mean, the Cardinals have beat the Browns, the Titans, and the Rams handily on the road this year they've never been a team that travels well didn't have their head coach their center and yet Kyler went out and threw for four touchdowns it was really nice to see that his he looked fine throwing the ball because there was worry about the shoulder injury the only thing to keep an eye on moving forward and and it's you didn't really learn it in this game because they didn't they they jumped on the Browns right off the bat the defense got after him um so we he didn't need to run the ball but he didn't run the ball. And I know that at the end of last year from weeks 12 on when he had the left shoulder injury, that was where fantasy-wise he was hurting was he stopped running the way he had ran the first 11 weeks. Yeah, that's a good good point. He didn't need to, like you said, but he also threw the ball away on some plays I thought he was going to take off on. Matthew Stafford, huge game, four touchdowns. They might have all come in the first half, maybe one in the second half. He's the quarterback seven on the year. Faces Detroit next week, although that that should be what Detroit, Houston, and Tennessee. That's the next three weeks. Oh, let's, brother, let's go, Stafford. I mean, this is where you know you got a lot of heat, Mike, for the redraft with how high you took Daryl Henderson mm-hmm. because there were so many other players on the board there, and you're like, I think he's going to be a key after this week, and then these three next matchups, people might um, be catching up to that. Take. It's too late for you. <laughs> oh, you against, can let him on board. Oh no, but I'm saying if you at, get him right now, now, at now if you have Henderson, yeah, you, it's it's done. I ho- hopefully you traded high for him a, a week or two back uh, against Detroit. Stafford's gonna. I mean, he's gonna want to yes pour on touchdowns. All right, Mike. Start of the week. Joe Burrow had a nice week as mm-hmm. well. You got three great wide receivers there. Joe Mixon looked good in the screen game, and it was Detroit. So. That's a preview for every. Uh, Detroit has never had a lead this year. Did you know that? What? They're the only team that has had zero. They they haven't had a lead at any wow. moment. No, what? They weren't up on Baltimore. It was just. Yeah, that. Yeah, they've. It was they've a tie. Well, no. then then I read a tweet improperly. Yeah, oh. I think you. Have. Wait, you got bad information on Twitter? I I was using. They the lied old, to you. I thought I read that the Lions had not played with a never took a snap with the lead. Huh. So maybe they maybe they took the lead on a defensive play and never took an offensive well, snap. Well, that that is how it happened in that Baltimore game. Okay, so then that that's the case. They never, okay. never All right. took a snap uh, with the lead, and they're playing bad. All right, let's move on. Running backs. Jonathan Taylor is on fire right now. Yes, only fourteen carries, but one forty-five and two against Houston. I I looked over to Mike. I go, oh, Jonathan Taylor. He hasn't done much today. And the next handoff, he went up the whole sideline. Yeah. Ends up scoring. I, we were I very was clairvoyant yesterday. Oh, dude, I I was in that same moment because we we were not together yesterday. I I was losing in the draft. You're on the side of a highway, right? <laughs> right Watching yes. on your phone. I was uh I was losing a DraftKings. I literally said, "Dude, I'm gonna need like a hundred yard Jonathan Taylor touchdown to get back in this." And then boom, he had like the eighty yard run, and then gets a touchdown to play later. Yeah, it was Mike. Mike Clay said the Lions have yet to play an offensive snap with the lead. Uh, okay. So if if he's wrong, I mean, it's not me. It's there's him. no way. 
<laughs> Clay's not putting that out there if it's wrong. All right. Um, Leonard Fournette with the big game. We talked yep. about it. Joe Mixon, nice to see. 18 for 94, but the big one was a big touchdown pass. Start mm -hmm. of the week for Jason. Nice. Daryl Henderson, whew, 21 for 78. Start of the week for Andy. Najee Harris uh, is really good. I mean, it, it's hard to – well, sort of, right? Like, he's had these games where he's had low yards per carries, and it doesn't matter. Like – He's getting the ball 25 times. This was the best argument for Najee Harris was that if he's bad, he's good for fantasy. I, I, if he's great, then he's a like a top three running back. I think of all the – and you also want a player with, with low injury risk, and he feels that way right now. Just the, his his build is this Derrick Henry in his usual He's a get. sturdy guy, yeah. Like outside – so Derrick Henry won, right? Um, I'm sure if you went back and redrafted at I the would one not position – Yeah, I would uh, – well, I was drafting on the the information from uh, the coach who should not be named. Yeah, thank if, you, thank you, Mike. Outside of Derrick Henry, may I mean, I think I'd rather have Najee Harris. Ooh, honestly, because I, at of, two? of 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 reliability okay. at two. I don't think that there's a huge difference between ceilings between Dalvin Cook and Najee Harris. Uh, yeah, I mean Najee and I, I, Zeke is there for me as sure, well. Sure, sure. Um, but he is in that tier. He's in that absolute tippy tippy top tier yeah i mean at least with with zeke he still leaves the field i mean mike and i were constantly going what are you putting tony pollard yeah. in in the overtime and just wait till next year when his quarterback is aaron Rodgers. the cowboys Najee. Najee. no oh, okay uh daryl williams running back for the kansas city chiefs 21 for 62 and 2 this was the most fantasy points scored uh, the last time this many points were scored was Damian Williams. Yeah, back two years ago. So this was a the biggest week for a running back in Kansas City in a long time. Seventy two percent of snaps, a uh, couple of touchdowns, good runs on the goal line, and Dalvin Cook twenty nine for one forty. Back at it, Khalil Herbert. Let's bring his name up. Oh man, he looked great. He, that I think that's the important takeaway here is. Beyond the box score, beyond the good fantasy finish, he really looked good. Every run was like this. This is a good looking back. I know he was a six rounder, Mike. You liked him in in his college tape. Yes. I don't know that we'll be able to rely on him because of him basically being the third string guy only in um, due to the situation in front of him. But I don't know. Maybe he earns more. I think he will earn some more time. Unfortunately, he's playing Tampa Bay next week, so this is not where. He'll be if Damian Williams is somehow out again because of COVID. He'll Would be a play. He'll Herbert? be a, yes. He'll be a fine volume play. Uh, not, but the upside will not be tremendous. Uh, update for you on Kareem Hunt, Jason, for the dynasty league. <gasps> Expected to miss several weeks with a calf injury. He'll likely head to injured reserve, but does not sound like Achilles. All right, okay. baby. So far, so good. Heal up, Hunt. I feel from, like we uh, would have heard Achilles by now. Yeah. Now it's from Rappaport. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, James Robinson is one of the best actual running backs in football. He's so good, and his dominance just makes it so ridiculous that the Jacksonville Jaguars spent a first-round draft pick on a running yes. back. This dude is one of the best running backs in the league, and you spent a first on another running back. Yeah, it, which was stupidity, and I love nothing more on this show to just take shots at Urban Meyer. Uh, justifiably so uh, frequently, but I was very concerned after Robinson had the the monster game. That the monster game is. I almost lost my mug. <laughs> I, I almost I'm lost really it. Sad Did the you camera, see it? Yeah, I was looking right at oh, you. Oh man, I'm sad the camera was not on you because Andy was taking a drink out of a mug and almost just dropped it. The whole for mug. No reason. I mean, the whole mug. <laughs> I don't know. My hand stopped uh, working. But after the game where where Carlos was out and it was finally James Robinson time and you could we all got to see it again Urban Meyer finally got to it's like he didn't watch any tape on James Robinson before taking the job in Jacksonville but he finally unleashed Robinson I think Hyde had no touches yeah this it was past 100%. Week. so I will Robinson. give the credit to Urban Meyer that it took a long time but I think we're finally here and safe and secure that Robinson will be his guy moving it's forward. It's also it was just probably Schottenheimer, but it was a great play call at the end of the game. 
throwing inside to Chanel. To, yeah, Visca. Making yeah. the timeout, you know, winning the game in regulation instead yes, of. Yes, congratulations, Jacksonville. Yeah. Winning streak. Hey, and sorry, Miami, but we, we already put your season to bed a couple weeks ago. Andy yeah, did. you just, the vibes. Yeah. Bad vibes. I mean, I don't think um, Flores survives this year. I think he's done. That no. sucks, man. 100%. No. Really? Yeah. I don't I, think so at all. I mean, this is, okay, you go from the number one third down defense to the 32nd third down defense in the entire f NFL. What's the difference? They lost uh, uh, a cornerback. Was uh, yeah. They're, I mean, this, this, this. I'm I'm talking throwing on season, not just this game. You just lost to Jacksonville. Yeah, Xavier Howard didn't play this game, but yeah. I I just think Flores is highly respected I, in that I, area. I I don't agree. I, I don't agree. We'll see. All right. Um, anybody else at the running back position you want to mention? Nice game from Damian Harris. Nice bounce back game. Uh, 18 for 101 against Dallas and Ramondre. Uh, got sure. work and looked pretty pretty decent. Ramondre pretty, was getting the pretty. He was getting the receptions. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, which even a downfield reception, which was kind of wacky. To I see. mean, I'm, well, I'm sure we'll talk about it, but it's like that's very exciting for the future. Like if he, in Dynasty, Ramondre was kind of a man. Eh, fine, I'll take him in. You know, the back of the second or the third round, but. An actual big-bodied running back who has proven now already, like early in his career, that he has the skill set to be a pass catcher too. Like that's very exciting for the future of fantasy. All right, before we get into the wide receiver studs, we want to thank IP Vanish for sponsoring today's episode. IP Vanish, what is it? It's a virtual private network, a VPN, super important tool that helps you safely browse the internet. You can use it on computers, tablets, phones, um, even things like a Fire Stick. All your streaming media. All your data is encrypted, and um, it protects you from others knowing what you're doing. And when you're on the internet, you want your business to be your business. And for listeners of the show, IP Vanish is offering an incredible 65% off their annual plan. That means six months for free. And if you run into any problems, don't worry. They have 24-7 support by email, chat, and telephone. So go to ipvanish.com slash footballers. You'll claim your 65% savings. Their annual plan is just $44.99 for the first year with our exclusive discount. This is the time to sign up with our discount and the current promotional offerings. You can get a VPN for 65% off their usual offering. IP Vanish is the best of the best. They're even rated 4.7 out of 5 on Trustpilot, and that's with more than 6,000 reviews. Remember, it's ipvanish.com slash footballers to get the deal and start protecting yourself online. And we want to thank Manly Bands, guys. We know for the better part of their lives, our, our better halves have been fascinating about that perfect wedding ring, the cut, the clarity, the carrot, the color, all those stupid seeds that are <laughs> that, that cost us so much money. Uh, but it's not the it's not the same way for guys, right? We go to that uh, that jewelry store and there's ten, I'll take that one. I'll take the guy's ring. Right, exactly. I'll take the guy's ring. They got like one ring for you and. Manly Bands is here to change that. Have first of all, they really have amazing rings. Like cr they have rings created out of the coolest stuff. Yes, they do. They have rings that are awesome looking. I have the baller ring. Uh, you can get uh, a ring. Is that because you're a baller? That is why they. Uh, you can get the Jack Daniels whiskey barrel collection. Uh, the Chris Harrison collection. You can get the rings that are just just amazing uh stuff here and, get to and the dinosaur stuff yeah to, oh man the dinosaur bones um you can get a manly ring sizer from manly bands they'll ship it out to you that makes sure that your ring is going to fit perfectly during work during play once you know your size you can order from they have gold they have wood they have antler they have steel dinosaur bone and meteorites it's fantastic so you, you can get one of each that you way it's could. like, today yeah. is dinosaur, tomorrow it's what <laughs> killed them. So, look, to order uh, your Manly Band and get 21% off plus a free silicone ring, go to manlybands.com slash footballers. That's manlybands.com slash footballers and use the code footballers for 21% off. Manly Bands, the best rings, period. couple more updates on Kareem Hunt. Uh, <gasps> we have Kevin Stefanski saying it's likely he will miss more than three games. Did you just? <laughs> did you have your first burp? What was that? You that just was your a, breath. That was a sort of exhale. There was an exhale while not allowing any of the air to leave my mouth. Uh, rough oh. estimate is four to six weeks. Um, this is actually important on a lot of fronts. Obviously, just specifically with Cream Hunt, 
But I was thinking about, you know, is this a season ender? Do you go and try to pick up Nick Chubb on the cheap? Because he's back in a couple more weeks. Right. And, you know, you start to think about what holds him back in the offense is some of the utilization on third down, some of the potential goal line sacrifices that he makes for Kareem Hunt to come in. Those things could be removed. Mm -hmm. Now, there, there could still be an argument for that, but, you know, maybe that window is three weeks for Nick, Nick Chubb and, you know, Nick Chubb coming off an injury for three weeks is maybe, you know, Dearness Johnson and, and Felton get involved. So I guess I'm not – I'm kind of neutral on that strategy at, the, at this time. Yeah, it's it's really hard to see how it's going to play out. Obviously, we're gonna we're gonna have the next few weeks to watch and see how good Dearness Johnson and Felton look. Felton was involved in kind of the passing game prior to these injuries, so I'd imagine that the some of those looks that you're talking about with um, Nick Chubb being taken off the field for Kareem Hunt, I would think Felton would slide in on some, but certainly not all. Wide receiver studs, huge game for the second week in a row for CeeDee Lamb. Probably a bit of an exhale. People were, you know, we had the green room show a couple weeks ago. He was one of the, well, I'm a little worried because he had had a couple down games. Nine for 149 and two. It's the wide receiver eight on the season. Going into the bye week, coming out against Minnesota and Denver. CD Lamb is fine. He's great. As is Cooper Cup, nine Ooh. for one thirty and two. Cooper Cup of coffee, man. Keep getting in that end zone, Cooper. <laughs> Keep doing it. It's easy for him. Um, he's on pace for one hundred thirty catches, eight eighteen hundred and fifty yards, and twenty touchdowns on one hundred and ninety two targets. You love to see it. And Robert Woods got back in the end zone, although he only had a couple catches. Yeah, he had a Cooper Cup a couple catches. Oof. Um, that's how many he get. Cooper Cup chooses <laughs> each game. How many to give up? It's like pouring out the Halloween candy and being like, I'll give you the bubble gum. Yeah. Uh, Adam Thielen. Big week for Adam Thielen. He ended up um, 11. Hot, hot, hot. 11 for... Uh, <laughs> 11 for 126 and 1. The 13 targets was the big surprise. Like, Thielen hasn't been the volume guy over the last, like, year and a half. So it was just wonderful to see. Now this game, um, Jefferson was still eight for eighty. So yeah, this game had a lot of points scored, and um, yeah, just ex some extra time. Man, the field goals for Minnesota, like that, every single game that Minnesota is involved in this year, it's just been crazy finish, just wild. Donovan Peoples Jones had two touchdowns, one of which was a hail mary. At halftime. At halftime, which was wild. Um, I'm not really chasing Peoples Jones. I think he's a good player, but you're going to have Landry back. Beckham's fine. Jalen Waddle had 13 targets. I mean, when you're missing Devontae Parker, Preston Williams, Will Fuller, mm -hmm. um, this is what we expected from Waddle last week. We got it this week. 10 for 70 and 2. He's going to be an opportunistic play. Atlanta, okay. If those guys are still out, um, Marvin Jones, nice bounce back performance. Yeah, there you are, Marvin. We were missing you. We did. It didn't make any sense that he wasn't no. getting it done. Um, and so now you can confidently bench him because it's a bye week. Yeah, seven for a hundred and one. Antonio Brown with the big week on Thursday. Cortland Sutton. Look, this this Denver game was ridiculous. For an evaluate, for me, it's hard to evaluate it. Because they were playing in full, you know, oh, the garbage man can. for a half. I mean, it was a half of Teddy Bridgewater alternating between targeting Sutton and Fant. And I know Noah Fant must have heard me on the show, went out and had his best game of the year. But Bridgewater would throw an interception. <laughs> yeah. And then he would target Sutton and Fant over and over and over again, then throw another interception. And there just wasn't a lot of real football strategy in this game. No, it, I, I understand that for evaluation purposes. It was a very wild game. The, the Raiders came out with all the hullabaloo surrounding the organization and Gruden. They came out motivated and wiped the floor with them. That being said, the 14 targets, at least at you know garbage or otherwise, you see he's being targeted. And if you really look back to that week two breakout when Judy went down, you, we, we've talked about this. He has only had two bad games. It was one against the Jets where they were up and they didn't need to throw the ball at all, and then a, a tough game against Baltimore. But you're talking 12 targets, 11 targets, and 14 targets in the other three games. 
So Sutton, yeah, I, I think he's just a really good player. Yeah, Tim Patrick did miss some time in this game. Probably speaks more to no offense involvement as well. DeAndre Hopkins, A.J. Green, and Christian Kirk all scored. Hopkins had two touchdowns. Green led the way, five for 79 and one. Christian Kirk nearly a mirror finish, five for 75 and one. Everyone gets a TD in Arizona. Everyone's happy with the roulette this week. Other than Rondell Moore. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, there's not enough to go around there. Uh, man, outside of that Hail Mary, Arizona held Cleveland's offense to seven total points on the whole day. Mm -hmm. mm. Might be wanting to consider that defense. I mean, next Houston. week. It's, uh, well, just in the future. It doesn't seem to matter where they go. They're, they're pretty solid through and through. Uh, and I and Chandler Jones was not even a part of it. Chandler, and neither was Zach Allen, who had two sacks the week before, defensive end. Noah Fant, Mike Gesicki, Mark Andrews, huge weeks. Fant had 11 targets, negative game script, 9 for 97 and a touchdown. Gesicki continues to be yes. valuable despite the switch back to Tua. So that was kind of a big deal. Um, and Mark Andrews, I think a lot of that too with Miami is their defense is just not that good. You know, this defense was something that, you know, they will be in these negative game scripts moving forward. Mark Andrews delivered with another touchdown. Mark Andrews has been incredible over the last month. Hasn't had a, you know, he's been very inconsistent um, over the last year or so, but the last four games, all solid games, all extremely involved. He is four points behind Travis Kelsey for the season. I So Nick Chubb was not placed on IR, Brooks? I don't believe so. Okay, so they're saying he's really pro he's progressing well this week. Did we get misinformation on that? Maybe. Hmm. We'll have to vet that. Um interesting. Yeah, they Stefanski saying he's not ruling out Nick Chubb. Huh? So I would I'll okay. apologize if that was um if we conveyed IR when he's not on IR. Interesting. So we're getting like a constant stream of Browns news during the show today. So um, we're reacting with you. If so, then I would go trade for Nick Chubb. Okay. Um, yeah, that's that's a huge window for him. And it's going to have implications on Dearness fab spend. Sure. OJ Howard had the interestingly good week. I don't know if Gronk's coming back soon. Kelsey, I would think so. Kelsey was Kelsey. Ricky Seals Jones, four for fifty eight and a touchdown. Yeah, he came through and the And Hawkinson, eleven targets. There he is. One, yeah. of the, one of the worst games by a quarterback in a in a, in did a you, long time. Did you see uh Dan Campbell talking about Jared Goff? What was his quote? Oh just, just bodying brother. Him? So he, he starts out saying um he doesn't think he can really it's fair to evaluate him. And then he takes this pause. And this is the most dramatic pause I've ever seen in my entire life. Every movie included. It looks like he's about to cry. He's just thinking and thinking and thinking. Holding his breath and then he finally talks again. You I mean, you were you were just what is he going to say? Is something going on? And he just says he needs we need more from him. He needs to do more. He needs to be better. He needs to step up. He needs to like he he just basically said, "Yeah, you're not playing well enough, Jared Goff. Do better. We want to win." It was like he was like, "Should I put him on blast?" And then he had a fight with himself in the in his head and then was like, "Yeah, I think he just deserves to be put on blast." The last 2 weeks Jared Goff has attempted 35 and then this past week 48 or I'm sorry, 42 passes. He has achieved 203 and 202 yards in those 2 weeks. When you attempt 42 passes and you end up with 200 yards. Well, he got he had a good amount of interceptions this week, though. That's good. The, I that's mean, good, right? Just one, just one. Oh, but, for real? Yeah. Oh. Mm, um, but he darn. did. But he did have a 4.8 yards per attempt, and it's kind of a mess. oh, it's just a mess. That's disgusting. Speaking of disgusting, pooped in his big boy pants. I was getting shoe dropping gifts on Twitter. Justin <laughs> Herbert, twenty two for thirty nine, one ninety five and one. Gross. Uh, the, you you can pretty much say gross to the Chargers. I mean, they were the most disappointing yep. entity of the weekend because Herbert died of a game. Disappointed. Keenan Allen disappointed. Mike Williams was non existent. Austin Eckler was bad. I mean, the just shows the key to the offense is Larry Roundtree. Yeah, he, he, he was, was out, out for this game. That's got to be. I mean, he was out last week too. Oh, 
your math Purdue does not check out. Amazingly, Lamar Jackson finished one spot higher on the week. I mean, 19 for 27, 167 and 1, 8 for 51 on the ground, two picks. Yeah, because stupid. Oh, that the Levy. I couldn't handle it. The Levy on Bell goal line free touchdown where he, if, if you didn't see the play, it was a read option and the defense <laughs> completely sold out to stop Lamar. Who would have thought you'd and, give the ball to Lev Bell? And I, look, yeah, I'm not saying it was the wrong play. Because it was, it works to perfection, and Lev Bell could have moonwalked into the end zone. That's how long he had. But it just was. It felt so bad. As well, I've got Lamar on my league of record team, I've been trying to support Tyson Williams uh, the whole season, and just getting punched in the face by Harbaugh. Lat Latavius Murray was my start of the week because the process of. The running backs are going to do well, which they did. The running backs did incredible. And he did score, right? Yes, Latavius got a touchdown. I think Freeman got one too. Yeah, it, uh, it was like all the touchdowns went to the running backs. Which, if you're going to give them to Murray, fine, I could accept this as a fantasy football player. But Lev Bell, Harbaugh, come on, man, G a brilliant call. Uh, Taylor Heineke <laughs> was worse vomit. than both of them. Quarterback yeah. twenty-three on the week. A, to, a disaster. To be fair to Heineke, which I mean, he was in a, he's a backup quarterback. He's just he's been fun. He has been producing for fantasy, but I mean, he, no, he his weapons were gone. Gibson yeah, got Terry hurt McLaurin. in this game, and Terry McLaurin, Terry McLaurin was a we don't even know if he's going to play. And now there are a couple big shots that the receiver needs to make a make it happen. McLaurin had an opportunity, didn't come down with the ball. Deami Brown had an opportunity didn't come down with the ball so it, tough yeah. game overall for Washington's offense and if, if they're missing Gibson it's going to be yeah. it's going to be tough for them it's going to be a mess and they might I mean from what I understand on the Gibson injury he needs rest yeah he needs a, he might need a week off which would be JD McKissick time I mean this yes. game went the yes. way I mean no Curtis Samuel McLaurin limited no Logan Thomas and JD McKissick was involved in every play which is just that's not a key to victory. Nope. All right, running backs. We talked about Eckler, six uh, for seven on the ground. What? Oh, man. He's still the running back two on the season. Is that right, Brooks? Yes, sir. Yeah, currently. Because, I mean, he's been dominant. He was <laughs> top eight the last month. Unexpected, uh, but like you said, the offense just dead. Um, I, I'm, I was thinking about coming out with a new series for the show. Okay. And um, maybe they're the impossibles. Maybe it's a new, new, new set. Okay. Of, aren't they making the Eternals movie? Yeah. yeah. So the the Impossibles are players. There wasn't, a, wasn't there a mob show? The Impossibles. There, there's the Untouchables. Oh, that's what I'm yeah. thinking of. That's what. But the Impossibles. Miles Gaskin is like one of the leading. I mean, this was Tyler Lockett, and Miles Gaskin are the first two members of yeah. the Impossibles. They're impossible to start. You don't know. Like you're rolling a die, and Miles Gaskin five for nine. Two for five in the passing game, a week after scoring thirty plus points. Yeah, he can had, you play him? He did have the six targets. No, I don't. At, at least not it, in, in by apocalypse next week. Yeah, you could play him, but he, he did have six targets. He also he had a fumble early on, and it seemed like he got doghoused for the fumble because you saw a lot of Ahmed after that. Who Ahmed has juice. I, I, he I also don't, dropped a wide open first down pass. Yes, I'm, I'm but I don't. I don't fault the, the coaching staff for wanting to get Ahmed on there involved. The Malcolm Brown stuff is, is very bizarre. Uh, but, yeah, at, at this point, the gas man is – he's just – he's refueling and <laughs> permanently. Uh, here's here's one I'm really curious about. Jamal Williams. What, what do we I don't make, know what happened, What do we man? make of this where he has 30% of the snaps, Swift has 78%, he only had four carries, two targets, basically – was not involved. Is this the trend? Are they just getting Swift he, more involved? Well, he's injured. Yeah, he's he was beat up. Which I mean, Swift is always on the injury report too. Maybe Jamal Williams is just more more hurt than DeAndre Swift. Uh, when, when you were talking about Campbell referencing uh, Jared Goff's play in my head, I'm like, I because I had to start Jamal Williams as a running back too. It was you didn't give Jamal Williams any carries, man. What do you talk about, Jared Goff? Give Jay Willie the ball. 
Yeah, he, he came in limited but, with a hip injury. But he's and, probably hurt, And you yeah. wonder if that had something to do with it. Also, I'm sure it did. Game script. Miles Sanders, uh, he's he's a member of the Impossibles as well. <laughs> he, looked, he was so good. Miles what? Sanders was so good against Tampa Bay on the ground. I mean, he didn't get the opportunities. It, it, it's like he's charging up. Right, yeah. <laughs> For yeah, all of 100%. the plays that he doesn't get to go, he's just hold, he's holding the turbo button down or something and charging up. But you obviously can't you can't play a guy a nope. running back who's nope. getting so few touches. Uh, wide receiver duds: Mike Williams, Keenan Allen. I expected this to be a big game for Allen with Williams hurt and just the way that this team's been playing. But I think you just have to throw this one out. It was a stink fest. Mike Evans. Chris yeah. Godwin both fell well behind Antonio Brown in terms of targets. Going to happen. Yeah, it's the roulette you play. Terry McLaurin, eight targets, just four for 28. I mean, the eight targets you'd be happy with. He just yep. didn't produce. Like I say, he, a couple plays that I think healthy McLaurin makes was just unfortunate. Didn't come down with him. All right, Hollywood Brown in the first game for Rashad Bateman ends up only four for 35. I believe Bateman was six for 39 or something. And, you know, a lot of signs to be optimistic for Rashad Bateman's involvement in the first game. Hollywood with a little bit of a down game here. Are you worried about it? I, I'm not worried about it. He's been good enough. We talk about the inconsistency of wide receivers, and he dropped another touchdown. So he had the opportunity. To, I, I don't. It wasn't like the uh, other game where he had three egregious drops. This one, I feel, was a difficult catch, but and, the opportunity was there. And like we point. said, the, the running backs took all the points yeah. for the Ravens. Chase Claypool. Two for 17. Very disappointing performance. I yeah, know he left hurt. He but did. He left early. He came back in for some offensive PI. I have to wonder if that injury was a huge part of it because still saw seven targets, but two for 17. I did not Doesn't see. Work. I did not realize that his line finished that low at two yeah. for 17. Mike needed basically some thing that just can't happen which is basically a full goose from yes. Claypool I needed that Sunday night miracle even though I couldn't root for it because I love Chase Claypool yeah, you don't right. want him to get hurt you just need him to score zero <laughs> but he scored <laughs> just enough almost zero and it just was enough still enough oh just enough the, the reason why you know <laughs> <so awful. laughs> you just want him to uh, explode and like yep you know make it quick just go straight for the throat no he's like you're bleeding out on this one there's still just a up and down feeling with Claypool, and part of it is Claypool himself, but part of it is like, I mean, Big Ben missed him on a wide open play later. He wasn't an injury that that held Claypool back. He broke open down the sideline. Safety was late getting over. It was a touchdown, but Big Ben airmailed him by 40 feet. I mean, it didn't make any sense. But Big Ben right now, everything's close to the line of scrimmage. It's let me let me take you into the mind of Big Ben right now. Snap the ball. Cheeseburger. <laughs> That's exactly what he's thinking. So mean. I think that's part of the problem. That's so mean. <laughs> mm, double, double. Yes, I'll take onions. Grill them? Sure. Oh, shoot. Throw I mean, them all. <laughs> I'm surprised you can't hear Al laughing as loud as he's laughing from behind the producer's desk. Why? Wow, that they just submarine any time, real point Sorry. I could make Sorry. there. You were saying. I yeah, was saying he's going to Deontay. Yes. And then if Deontay's covered, he looks for Deontay one more time. Cheese stick. And then Najee. <laughs> and then he looks for Najee, and and that's the problem. But anyways, uh, Metcalf and Lockett. This was exactly how we thought this would play out. Metcalf is bigger. Bigger equals less chance of throwing an interception. Mm -hmm. And Geno Smith could find Metcalf on a few plays. Six for 58 is not going to kill you. Certainly not going to win you a week. Yeah, I'm going to keep playing Metcalf. I'm going to not be playing Tyler Lockett. I think Russ will be back on the shorter side of the estimate, though. If you watched this psychopath, Russell Wilson, before the game, mm -hmm. he ran through the whole game in, with an invisible football. I mean, he, we'll, we'll see. It's it. Yeah, I think it comes down to can you actually grip and throw a football? They, they're talking about the degrees with which he can bend his finger. You're only supposed to be at 10 degrees now. He can bend at 70 already. Oh, 70 degrees. I mean, yeah, this, but this he guy is, on is IR. going to fight himself back. Yeah. He is on IR, so uh, unlike Chubb, we're, we're sure of that one, right? Um, so <laughs> two more weeks at least. Yeah, I think what happened is live on the show, Nick Chubb got declared out, and we actually got to announce that. And – 
for some reason in my mind, I conflated that with IR in the same moment. So certainly not on IR. Yes. On my apologies for any analysis. And it is not in consideration either, according to what I just saw. Well, yeah, because he might play this week. So (laughs) aren't they the Thursday night game? Yes, they are. I'm getting nods from eyeballs back there. Yeah. Look, I got something right. T. Higgins, uh, three for 44. You know, the one for the only wide receiver you can play confidently on that team is Jamar Chase. Yeah. And you can play him super confidently. Yeah. They have Baltimore in Baltimore next week. That's going to be a struggle. These are the top two teams in the division. Uh, You know, Cleveland, not looking great. And uh, Cincinnati's four and two. So, wow, four and two. Good yeah. for you guys. I, I'm big fan. I am too. Joe Burrow's great. Love me some Burrow. <laughs> Cheeseburger. <laughs> uh, Devonta Smith, Michael Pittman, Allen Robinson. Allen Robinson had a great game. I don't know. He doesn't deserve to be here. This was incredible. Four sliding scale. Four fifty three. Yes, we're grading on a scale here. Seven targets. Four for fifty three. I mean. That that a boy, Alan. I remember um, when you didn't just give me one fantasy point. Yeah, I mean this this he's unplayable. Worried about the Pittman game? I mean, Not I was really. I was going to compliment Wentz. He's been going downfield. I mean, found Paris Campbell. But we just talked about two injuries, right? Campbell and Hilton are hurt. That's why I'm not concerned. Maybe you can trade for Pittman cheap right now. Maybe. Uh, and then Randall Cobb goosed. So not always going to hit. <laughs> Uh, Waller five for 59. I mean, he is Man. not nine or fewer points in every game since then. And Henry Ruggs has had an okay season. I mean, is this the point where six weeks in you have five disappointing weeks for Darren Waller compared to. Yeah. At like, as you, you're watching, if you, if you drafted Darren Waller first, it was, Oh wow. I mean, I avoided, uh, George Kittle. Cause that would have been a, a decision if you were taking Darren Waller, you know, like, well, do I go Kittle? And you bypass Mark Andrews, which Andrews had the slow start. Now Andrews is just is taking off, and his season is really exploding. Meanwhile, Darren Waller has nine, seven point nine, thirteen, six point five, eight point four. Here's yes. here's another way to look at it. Since week one, take week one out of the equation. Uh-huh. Okay, so that's the last five weeks. Um, Darren Waller is the tight end eight behind Noah Fant, behind yeah. Hunter Henry. Behind Mike Gesicki. Behind Knox. Well, imagine. obviously, N- yeah. Knox, Schultz, Kelsey, and Andrews ahead of him. It, you don't really have choices bad. here, though. Nope. Are you trying to trade? Let, let, you're in a good spot. You are, you know, you got two losses or whatever. Do you go pay up for Darren Waller? Because I don't think you can trade low for him. Even with all these down games, the team that has Darren Waller is going to want a premium for him. Do you go get him? I, if you've I'm got, okay with that. I think that if you've got... Someone like Dalton Schultz, who looks to be, you know, the real deal. He's very yes. involved in this offense. I, I think you can work a trade. If you're giving a piece back like uh, a Schultz or a Knox, you you might be able to get. Uh, do a, you really want to trade Dalton Schultz for Darren Waller? I would rather have Darren Waller, yeah. He's yeah, just a more oh, yeah. talented, more central piece of the offense. Even in those down weeks, the, he's on a thousand-yard pace. The fact that you would ask the question. That you 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 do have to say, man, do you really want him? You know, he's the worst quarterback. He hasn't been as good the last month. Those are the reasons why you can actually in not every league certainly, but there are going to be leagues out there where if you've got Schultz, you might be able to swing an affordable, um, you know, package deal to get Waller on the cheap. Yeah, you want the reliable, proven commodities at tight end, which is what Mark Andrews has shown, right? Like you had a couple weeks where you're like, eh. And then Mark Andrews was Mark Andrews, and Waller will be Waller. Now he's going into the bye after the Philly matchup, so that might be the week to target that manager. Schultz, Schultz is on bye this week. Oh, Just perfect. Saying, last month he is he's averaging at least six six catches. He's averaging how many? Six <laughs> six <laughs> catches, uh, and over seventy yards per game. Some touchdowns sprinkled in there. It's been great. I mean, yeah, this is not nothing. anti-Schultz. Exactly. It's, it's just to say that if you want to take a bet on the rest of the season. What were those numbers that you said? I just closed it. But <laughs> uh, but he's he's had he's averaging you know about six receptions over about seventy four yards over the last month. Yeah, I mean the the thing is is Waller's been right around the sixty yard mark every week. Um, just not 
you know, two touchdowns. It's it's tough. It's a tough call. Ruggs, like I said, Ruggs has been a lot better. Yes, he gets Ruggs a downfield been, shot every week. Ruggs has been pretty good. Yeah, good. For He's you. always open by about. He reminds me of Hollywood. Like when you, if you give enough pocket time to Derek Carr, you look downfield. Ruggs has got like six foot feet, six foot feet, <laughs> on uh, on We're the nearest apart. defender. Ruggs does seem like someone who, you like the game plan should feature him more. It's it's bizarre that Brian Edwards and Ruggs are just four target a week guys. And it seemed like maybe they're going to fix that a little bit. Because yeah, but I think Brian has he had like a second quarter catch. And I was freaking out, and then he did nothing. Mike is so invested in Brian Edwards emotionally. I like him. He's good. Had the one handed catch down the sideline. He's oh, I good saw at his football. Play. Is he? Yes, yeah. he's good at football. Okay. Yeah, I mean he, he's good at football. Not as good as you think he is. But he's good at football. I know. He's better than I think. You need him to fail with a lot of volume <laughs> oh. for, for, to be convinced, right? Sure. Because yeah. aren't you in like kind of a box of like, he's never going to get enough volume, so he's always great without volume? Mm -hmm. Okay. You admit the box. All right. We want to thank pristineauction.com. Kyler Murray signed jersey right now. 55! 55 bucks. Um, Kyler Murray the MVP right now if the season ended? No. Mm. Who's the MVP? Josh Allen. Really? Well, I just it, it goes to whoever's. I, I think that the and got the worst record. No, I, I obviously the record is is with the Cardinals, but I I think that um, the Bills are still to me the best team in the in the NFL. I was gonna say I think it might be Lamar. They're five and one. Lamar is. I, I know that it was a down statistical game for him. He actually but played. He was, he was the engine. Yes. So right now, Vegas odds, um, as of today. For what it's worth. Sure. Kyler Murray and Dak Prescott are tied with the best odds. Josh Allen is barely behind. So plus 400, plus 400, plus 450. Then it's Brady, Stafford, Rodgers. Lamar's all, all the way up at 1,200. Wow. Sounds like I'd, Yeah. If good I was throwing down, I'd deal. do that one. So, um, I mean, Brady will get it in the end. Yeah, he might. I mean, he's – I don't know. No, I, I if Kyler – if Kyler's – if the Cardinals have the best record, Kyler will win the MVP. That would be outstanding. So, Aaron Jones signed jersey, $63, pristineauction.com. Use the code? Ballers. 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 Get a $10 credit. Well, that'll do today. That'll do it. Uh, foot feet. <laughs> That's how we end the foot show. Foot feet. Dunzo. <laughs> That's right. Nick Chubb's not on IR. That's great news. Jason made it in. Also great. See you tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.